So, um, I uh, brought a little video again for you guys today. Let me see if I can make it work. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> I last time I referenced the um, remember we did that exercise and I was like hey there's this demonstration of people sitting on a rotating chair so I wasn't sure anybody knew what I was talking about so now you get the demonstration <laughs> anyway standard uh, physics or other science uh, demonstration many of you have seen it I'm sure anyway um, Let's do a little warm up and we'll return to the topic, shall we? Okay, right, so first remember, um, not just stretching the muscles, but activating the body, aligning everything and uh, reminding ourselves of the connections. And again, one way is to sort of try to expand all those little spaces like right here and uh, in, on the, often on the insides of the joints that sort of get sort of crunched under normal day to day, standing around or sitting around. You want to open all those up. So starting from the palms of your hands and the arches and the soles of your feet, opening those and then letting that opening lengthening feeling progress up through the elbow, the inside of the shoulder, the front of the neck, the back of the neck where it reaches the skull and the top. And then also progressing up your legs from the sole arches and the bottoms of your feet the backs of your knees, the front of your hip joint here, and so on, all the way up, the space between your hips and your ribs, all the way. Okay. And inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Up. Exhale. Now focusing on stretching uh, one axis of the body. So my feet are together, but really I'm just standing on one foot and this, this whole side of my body boundary. Reaching it as far as I can and then continuing to reach it even as it bends. Okay, and the other side. Stretch, stretch, stretch. Keep it. You can actually feel sort of the ribs separating a little bit. So the spaces between the ribs starts to open. Back to the first side. And one more. And rotating. And the other way. Using your forearms to help extend the space, uh, stretch your legs even a little extra. Okay. Can you guys hear that? Howling in the background? <laughs> my, next door neighbor, my next door neighbor has a pack of um, teenagers, teenage pups. And uh, there's a train tracks in the area. So whenever the train comes by and goes, woo, woo, then all the, all, the, um, all the puppies would also howl. And they would start going, oh, 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 it's super cute. <clears throat> so nowadays, um, they're not such little puppies anymore. They're teenagers, teenage pups. But this one, you want to have your 
in a V. Try to keep your upper body, uh, your vertical axis, maintain your vertical axis, uh, but um, let your heels come up. If this is bad for your knees, uh, just, you know, modify as needed. Okay, but you're trying to get a sense for your vertical axis and maintaining it even as you um, move up and down. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the next one is take a Han knee in this position. So uh, one side of your body forward, your knee in your hand, right? And then switch. So you're just sort of rotating on the balls of your feet. Um, but your upper body stays fairly quiet. Like so. I'm going to switch to the standing version of this one. <clears throat> so the, the analog for standing is a uh, changing hanmi, right? So you draw up, feet together, draw back. So we just switched on me um, by changing feet in the front. Boom. But here again, like we're looking to feel that the bottom half, say from the waist down, has all, all this sort of potential energy in it. But your upper body can remain free of all of that uh, dynamism that we want to cultivate in the lower body. Upper body is free uh, and able to um, engage with whatever situation you're going on and maintain awareness. Upper body is sort of floating quietly on top, able to do whatever it needs to do, which isn't that much right this moment, but will be in a minute. But the, but the lower body, right, so isn't just changing feet. Like some people change on me just by, you know, sort of floating around, <clears throat> letting the upper, uh, Letting the lower body just step, step. And that's great and all, but just as, um, right, as we sort of go through the different um, aspects of our basic movement, sort of dig a little deeper, uh, a little layer beneath the surface for each one. Like we just, so we looked at, you can walk or you can walk, right? You can change on me or you can change on me, right? And so here, right, you're thinking there's all this, all this, so you can just bring your feet together like nothing's going on. And in fact, nothing's going on. Or you can sort of feel the gathering as everything comes to the center line. And this, this compression is a lot of potential energy that, that, right, that can then go out. So gathering it all together and letting it out. Compress, expand. And you can use it just to sort of concentrate your power. Um, and then you can find a place to put it. Right now, we're just releasing it again in our step. But uh, you remember, <clears throat> but if you had a stick, you would, right? Even if you were just punching, right? So compress it. Compress it and send it. So um, when you're attacking, when you're stepping, when you're turning, these are all sort of different things where if you create that dynamism, then you have uh, so much more potential energy that can be used. So anyway, so and then in, so in each of the exercises that we've been working on each week, um, it's intended to have uh, bring your attention to that feeling and that potential that, that can exist in, uh, in your regular day-to-day -day movement. So back to the, the guy in the spinning chair, I apologize, he's not an ice skater. <laughs> but you, you may remember last week we practiced um, uh, this movement. So not the party trick one. Uh, although that's good too, but the one where you sort of bring your hands together and let the 
let that compression transfer to the gel and make it spin. So this also is an expression of that creating a bunch of potential energy, like you're literally bringing everything in, like it's concentrated, where will it go now, right? And then in this exercise, you bring it in and allow it to make the dough spin, right? So you're not physically making the dough spin in the same way uh, as you normally see, but we're bringing the hands together, concentrating the energy in the center and letting that then send the dough around. Boom. So this, uh, this, this idea of um, uh, adding energy to the system so as to have some rotational momentum, angular momentum, as the gentleman in the video was mentioned, is one of the aspects of the patrol kata um, that um, makes them super fun. And it's one of the things that you don't see, or I don't see as much in like some of the more standard uh, Joe exercises that are out there. Uh, of course, it comes into play somewhere, but the patrol kata sort of um, emphasized that. I thought we'd just go ahead and uh, try one. There was a request to try some of the patrol kata. Are you ready, Katie? Okay. So um, the premise in patrol kata, uh, so there's two main versions of kata around that, that I have seen, and one is sort of the walking stick kata, and the premise there is that your toe is a walking stick, right? You're walking along. Um, walking, hence named walking stick kata sometimes. And then there's patrol kata, where the premise is your joe is a, your weapon and you're the, the guard patrolling the castle gates. Okay, so you're walking along with your, your weapon. It's, it's, you hold it in the middle and you tuck it up under your arm and you carry it uh, you support some of its weight this way, and then you support some of its weight by, you know, by having your hand here. But because part of the weight is captured by your arm and shoulder, then your hand can uh, relax and just have a, a gentle grip here. And then, you know, you, patrolling your castle gate, right, are here, and then somebody comes along and tries to attack you. So, in these kata, you're opening kamais from here, and because you're patrolling, um, it's not it's not really um, critical which foot is forward at any given moment, because if you're walking along, it could be either, right? or they could be even even. <clears throat> um, the first set of patrol kata are all uh, from an attacker coming ski. Uh, to the heart. So some of the basic moves um, that you, in the, the opening move in the first cup is somebody, you're walking along and somebody comes and they're going to stick you right in the middle, right, right here. So you take your, uh, you have your stick in the eye, the, you're going to make a sweeping motion from your lower left in front, your upper right. Paso. So from your lower left to your upper right. And so you're not just going to stand here and do this, right? Because the first line of defense in, in, uh, in general is to remove the target. So if they're coming right here, you're going to make the sweeping motion, but you're not going to stay right here. You're also going to remove the target by stepping back in a little to the back right corner. So not directly back, but a little bit over here. So just try that. Um, I'll try it facing the same way you're facing. So if you're walking along, somebody comes to attack you, ski to the heart. Uh, you're going to step a little bit to the back right corner, paso. Boom. 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 Facing, if I'm facing sideways and they're coming to my front, I'm going to step to my back right, and I'm going to make the sweeping motion and come to paso. So my right hand is by my right ear, and my left hand has reached across to support the bottom of the toe. So that's your opening move, and that should deflect their initial attack up and over your head. 
So that's number one. Number two is since you've uh, deflected their Joe up, that means they're, they have an opening down below. Right? Their Joe goes up, you're going to go back down. It's helpful to have something you can target, even if it's um, just a chair. <laughs> Right? Because um, on the one hand, you want to learn to feel the motions in your body and have good masubi and have good connection, and, but you also want to have good targeting precision. So here's my chair. The knee is going to be right here for me. Okay. So if you have something handy, um, even if it's just the door jam, right? you know, you can mark your, the height of the kids on the door jam. You can also sort of mark where the knee goes and uh, you know, where the ribs go and so on. So if the chair is coming to attack me, I'm making a sweeping motion up, and then I step back in, and I'm attacking the side of the knee. Boom, boom. And now we're practicing, um, so it's not just out and down. I think last time we were talking about the drop, right? So this is the first place where you see the drop. It's not just your Joe dropping down. It's, right, elbows first. Boom. So it's like it comes down and then there's your rotation. So rather than a giant rotation out and around, it kind of drops, it's more compact. Dropping in. Dropping in. You see that? And again, that's a, that's a characteristic of the troll cock in particular, right? You're learning to um, practice that particular dynamic as part of the training of the kata. Okay, that's the first step. Um, so if you're in fact moving to the attacker side, if you're the attacker, you're gonna hold the joe in your left hand. You're gonna pick up the heel of the of the Joe, so it automatically goes into your right hand. And by automatic, I mean you practice it until it goes into the end of your hand. If it doesn't, if you pick it up, you know, sort of here, just slide, either slide your hand to the end or slide the Joe through your hand until your pinky falls off the end. Boom. Well, not your whole hand <laughs> falling off, but slide it through your hand until you can feel with your pinky when it gets to the end. And then with practice, it should just go right there every time. Boom. 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 Okay, so that's your attack. So you get to the attacking, get to the ski position, and the attacker will just come in ski. So remember, the response is they're going to sweep your dough out of the way and then come from this knee. They're going to sweep it out from under you. So um, your job is to, first of all, remove the target. And you're going to do that with a Hanmi change. And second of all, you're going to put the Joe where your knee used to be. And the way that works, one more time, is Here's your initial ski. You're going to draw the Joe by pulling back with your back hand until you get here. Hand me change, and the, the back of the Joe, push it out. There you go. So we have a lot of sort of sliding going on, right? Let me try it from this side so you can see better. So here's the prep ski. Prep for the ski, draw, there's the attack. Now he's coming to this knee, right? And it's going to be like that. So I'm going to draw my Joe back so it's not hanging out there for him to hit. I'm going to change my Han knee, and that is enough to get both, get my knee out of the way, right? And the back hand, just like sweeping the floor with a broom, comes down. That's it. <clears throat> and then, of course, the, the deal is you want to put this all in your body. So all the things we've been practicing, right? Um, 
drop, change Han Mei, and then some of that dynamism that we had, remember like concentrate, let it go. Here's where that concentration and potential energy has a place to go. It's going to go here when you sweep, right? So your potential energy from Hanmi change helps to power the block here. Can you feel that? Once you've um, rescued your knee from imminent attack, you're going you're to um, try to respond in kind. So you're going to hold the joke with your right hand. Flip, and then you attack. So all together, ski. Protect your knee, sweep. Let go with your left hand, hold it in your right hand, let the joke flip, and ski it, ski again. Mm -hmm. So for the attacker, it's ski, change on the block, Flip, ski. Yeah, so let's just do that a couple times. For the attacker, you're here. Ski, St. John me block. Flip, ski again. You sort of get the feel for the basic moves. That's always the first step, like just figuring that part out. Then again, you want to try to apply some of the uh, compression expansion principles and stepping principles that we've been working on that should help to um, bring um, dynamism and power and momentum to your practice so that you're not just you know walking through the steps. But of course, if you're inside the house and you're just learning them, then of course you wanna be walking through the steps at this moment. <laughs> but for future reference, like the next piece is, is that. Okay, so that's the attacker. So let's return to the defender the guy patrolling the, the castle gate. So here he is, here I am. Um, and uh, the first attack is coming. I do this, right, so it's a diagonal sweep up, right? And then I step back in and go for their knee. Now remember, they're gonna um, remove their knee, uh, flip and come back in to get me here, right? So I'm getting a new ski that I have to defend. So for this, you're going to do the, the gathering block, this one. It's uh, in open hand, it's the, it would, in open hand, it would look like this, right? If somebody's punch was coming, you would arimi a little bit and then help it to go past you, right? Arimi and let it go past you. Yes, so it's that block, boom. So you're going to do that, but uh, unlike how you would do it, just as an open hand, sometimes you'd, the emphasis is entirely on um, drawing them in and past you. Um, or sometimes an open hand, you're using this block less to pull them past you and more as an excuse to arimi in, right? So more like this. So in our case, and we're using it more as an excuse to arimi in, right? So we're covering the, the incoming ski so that we don't get nailed but also you're coming forward as you do it, right? So, boom, boom, oh, sorry, boom. As opposed to, right, just standing here and doing it. Um, <clears throat> so the last piece after having avoided getting skewered is for your Joe to come around. Your Joe has to come around. Your hands are actually crossed at this point. So it makes a big loop and then comes in under and strikes the person in their, your attacker in their um, floating rib. So I'd be coming in, make a circle. So your Joe is here. It's now going past me, right? And I need my Joe to circle around, come in underneath and whack you. Yes.
When you say stop the Joe, do you mean at the very end? Okay, let me get a little tiny Joe. So um, well, it, it would be, it's close to horizontal there. Um, where it would stop is when you run into your partner's ribs. So it's, uh, right, so it'd be, you're sort of aiming for this edge of their body um, when you do it. Uh, so the um, angle of your jaw is less important than the distance of your jaw. Uh, another angular momentum lesson, um, the, the edges, the ends, right, are where the greatest uh, force are going to be, right? The greatest torque is available at the end of the, of the longer radial arm, right? So, so if you hit the person sort of more like this, in the middle of your jaw, um, you will be less effective than if you um, arrange the distance so you hit them with the end of your jaw, right? Because if you hit them at the end of your jaw, it means you're farther away, the radial arm is longer, and you'll have a greater impact. So I'm going to try this facing you this time. So uh, when you're doing this move, so here, come to the knee, cover in a reamy, your jaw end is going to come your jaw end is going to come over and it'll make this circle to come around. If you just stand right here when you do it, you're going to have a sort of a relatively short length of, of jaw, a relatively short radius that you're hitting them with, which is not as good. So the trick, if you can picture this, is as you're coming around, you're going to actually move out to the end of your jaw so that you can hit them with a longer length. So your last move when you're coming in to do this final strike is rather than stay right here and do it, you're actually going to leave your jaw there, but you drift off to the right. So now you're hitting them with the, uh, that much more. So so that last Doremi, rather than being really sort of straight in the way you normally would, you actually, it's sort of an L-shaped Doremi, you go forward and then cut off to the right. Does that make sense? Invisible partner Aikido was always tricky. <laughs> I think last time we, we, we sort of discussed some of this sort of drop um, that you can bring to your, to whatever movement you're doing, right? It helps to, um, connect you to the ground so that you're not floating around when you're doing the things, right? So you want to be boom, boom, boom. So shall we try it all together? Um, first, let's be the attacker. I'll be sideways. So pick it up and see. Let's change Hanmi, draw, sweep. Flip, ski again, and then wait to get nailed with, on your right side floating rib. That will be the end for you, for us. <laughs> right? And then on the other side, holding the Joe again in this patrol stance. Right? So somebody's coming in. We're going to do the diagonal up to Hasso. Step in, attack the knee. Draw and Arimi. Sweep under, connect with their rib. Boom. <laughs> Finishing move. Um, here's the Arimi and the, and the block. As it sweeps around, see this? My hands are actually, as it sweeps around, my hands actually get reversed. And part of the deal is the Joe should actually be braced against your forearm right here. So you're holding it tight against your forearm. So this becomes one solid piece against your body. So as your body goes and drops, the Joe, the Joe once it's in place, just goes with you. It doesn't have to, you know, swing, rotate around. 
So your body rotates as opposed to the Joe rotates. Does that make sense? So it becomes like an extension of your arm. So then also if your body drops, the Joe drops. So it doesn't um, open out like this at the end, right? You finish here and that's, that's the finish. Yeah. So everything's sort of tightly glued together just at that moment. They're really, they're fun and they've got a, a, a they sure emphasize different skill sets than the regular Joe um, katas that you, that at least that I normally see. So I really enjoy it for that um, in particular. Plus it's got all the flipping. Uh, we only did one, this is a uh, patrol number one that we did today and there's 10 of them all together. Um, but yeah, as you get into it, you're like, oh, there's lots of sort of spinning, flipping, twisting moves, which I really enjoy in case you haven't noticed. <laughs> and I think I've run sufficiently over, we should probably bow out. Is that okay? You can organize yourselves. Uh, thank you so much for coming, you guys. It's been a real pleasure and an honor to be able to see all of you each week. Um, this, of course, is the last one in our series. You have a fabulous new instructor starting next time, and um, uh, I will try to join if I can. It's um, I really enjoy visiting with you guys, and I hope that the classes have been interesting for you and, and useful. All thumbs up. All yeah. thumbs up. All thumbs up. <laughs> and maybe we can all see each other in person one day. <laughs>